a gray day here today, Friday the 13th, July, Friday the 13th, and we're really hoping to get some rain today. It's in the forecast, 60% chance, thunderstorms and rain. It has not rained properly here in over a month, and the vegetation is really suffering right in front of me there. That is sumac and later in the summer it flowers so that by the fall we have these beautiful red blooms on the top of, of those plants and you can see that they are completely wilted and suffering. So I'm not sure if even if we got some rain today, whether that would be enough to save them a bit. And you know what? I just started feeling the first few drops. So those right there are some wild cherry trees, also looking rather wilted. The spreader, that spreader that's in the middle there has been dying for the last few years, so that I'm not surprised to see only a little teeny bit of green at the very tips of that giant bush there. And as you can see, what I'm standing on here is our rock. This is a pretty typical Georgian Bay style rock that is everywhere. Makes it difficult to build. You have to usually blast or drill when you want to build. We have a lot of lichen. Beautiful, beautiful colorations in our rocks. And as you can see, everything is very, very dry. So, fingers crossed that we get a nice big storm today. Lots of lovely rain. All right, let's head back inside and do some stitching. I'll give you one more, one more peek. Oh, there's the, there's the construction pile right there from a few years ago. But, you know. There we go. All right, time to stitch. Well, it was 15 minutes ago that I was outside and the rain didn't turn into anything other than a few drips and drops. So it's still very gray, it's still threatening. So hopefully we'll get something. So what do you think about hoity-toity? Isn't it fabulous? I am, I am in love. I am absolutely in love. I feel like lately the projects that have come into my life have just been the best. You know, everything seems to be pretty much falling into place. The only, you know, it, it's really just user error for, for the mistakes that I've been making. Um, you know, all of the patterns that I'm working on, all of the beautiful fabrics and threads. I just feel very fortunate to have found a, such a pleasurable pursuit and to have the time to be able to put a few stitches in is always nice. I had to restitch this top part of the flower here, I there are six crosses here, and I had done seven, which put me one stitch over to the right, and so this entire part of the flower was was one stitch over to the right. So I ripped all that out, restitched it, and as you can tell, happily for me, my cone of 310 arrived and now I'm able to do the background. 
So that's what I've been up to the last few days. every spare minute I have. If you've been considering a long dog samplers pattern, look at that, I said that right on the first time. I even stopped myself because I thought I said it wrong because I always say long dong sampler because it's just, it just doesn't roll off the tongue very easily. Long dog sampler, if you've been considering one but have been intimidated by the size or you know, whether you thought there might be a lot of back stitching or, or something like that, you know, I would, I wouldn't hesitate. If you love the design, if you love the pattern, if you love the colors, or even if you can see the pattern done in colors that are more to your style or taste, these patterns are extremely well done. Beautifully charted, you know, they are uh, at least the ones that I have always worked from of, of hers are, are there, they are black and white. Um, so they are symbols, charted symbols and, but very clear, you know, they're not small. Uh, this particular pattern hoity toity does not have any back stitching, from what I can tell. I've only closely looked at two or three pages of the pattern, but I'm going to assume that, uh, that that, remains true for for the entire thing. Castles in the Air is another one that I have. I was lucky enough to receive uh, that pattern in the mail. In fact, from a lady, Pat, who uh, has joined me in starting Hoity Toity on my birthday. So hello, Pat, if you're if you're listening today. I have, I plan, I, so I plan on starting Castles in the Air at some point this year. I'm not sure when. I have already thought about fabric because I am completely in love with this r, &R Reproductions fabric and I know I have lots. I'm either going to stitch it on this or I'm going to stitch it on a cut of gingerbread. Uh, picture this plus uh, gingerbread even weave that I've got. I, I think I have to. I have to do. Uh, I have to put my thread on my fabric just to double check. But that sort of luscious raspberry colored silk that I purchased from Silks for You back a few months. That's the, the thread that I plan on using for it. So that's for Castles in the Air. Now, Pat warned me that Castles in the Air does have a lot of backstitching. And I know I may have mentioned in the past, I'm not a huge fan. However, that being said, it does, we all know that it adds so much to a design. And when you can see something that's already charted so beautifully and you want to replicate it the way that you see it, the backstitching, of course, will. I'm sure that I can put on my big girl pants and get that backstitching done, you know, 20 years from now. Ugh. So I'm, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm a little out of the loop up here. I'm missing out on everybody's watching everybody's floss tube. So I feel like I'm a little out of the loop on the projects that you're all working on, except for the people that I can see on the Facebook group and on Instagram which I love. I love Instagram and I love the, the Facebook group, the Friday off the grid Facebook group. It's, it's a ton of fun. And, but, but not being able to watch floss tube on a regular basis, you know, I, I see that new videos are up and it makes me a little wistful for my internet at home. 
However, if that's the only thing that I have to bemoan about the fact that I get to live up here all summer, I guess I'll just have to binge floss tube when I get home. I prefer to do the background, especially if it's a black or dark colored background, and then fill in the color on the inside. I find that, you know, of course I did it now because I didn't have my, my 310 here. So I did start with the, the color work in here, but I prefer to stitch the outline and then fill in the color because I find that the stitches that you do last sit the best in the, you know, they, they lie the best in the hole. So if you're stitching with a, you know, for example, these, these stitches that are down here that are sort of a very neutral color they would pop out a little bit more of that black background, just slightly more, if I had stitched them last. However, when you're standing back three feet, admiring my beautiful work on the wall, I don't think anyone's ever going to notice except me. And now that I have my 310, I am off to the races. colors in this pattern as charted I think are for me you know everybody has different taste obviously and I, I've heard comments that people find this autumnal which I I had it had never struck me as autumnal colors it, it really hadn't I see pinks and browns and um, you know the pink and black to me struck me as the dominant color but then you know, listening to people say, I would change the colors because I find it autumnal. That's, that doesn't really go with my decor. When, when I started thinking about that, I took another close look at the, the pattern. And, and of course the colors are, yes, when you look at the floss toss, they are overwhelmingly, you know, sort of fallish colors, the, you know, these sort of bowls of plenty here with the, with the squirrels and, um, you know, the, the fans at the top but seeing it actually stitched you know in reality to me it's still the pinks and the greens and the blacks that that stand out to me from for my eye anyways um and i think for me these colors are just some of my most favorite palette you know, it's a favorite palette of mine. So anyway, however, you know, there are no rules. There are no rules in cross stitch. And if you want to completely change up the colors, then, you know, you should. And isn't that fun? Isn't that fun when you see someone who's taken, a, you know, a design like, think about death by cross stitch. Now there's a massive, long dog sampler piece and how many variations we see on that pattern because it really is you know your own to to make so castles in the air I'm going I plan on using that silks for you raspberry because I figured um, the other two hanks that I bought are blue which is okay because I love blue. Blue features heavily in my life, but I thought for castles in the air, I would do a raspberry version. And I'm either going to use the gingerbread fabric, but I think that's actually maybe not quite right. And that's why I'm not quite sure I need to put the floss on it. If I don't use that, then I'm either going to use uh, another piece of this particular r and &R 40 count or I have another um, I have another 
bit of fabric from R&R Reproduction in, I think it's a 36 count, and I want to say it's called Witch's Brew, but it's at home and I can't confirm that that's the name. However, it's, it's, you know, it's like this, it's a warm, rich color, and I think it would look just beautiful with that raspberry silk. Isn't it fun to dream about new projects and putting things together and that's just the best. All right, so I think I'm gonna head down until I run out of floss. If you can hear that dog barking, believe it or not, that dog is on another island. His name is Woody. And he belongs to friends of ours who have lived up here on the in the islands for years and years. And Woody barks at every boat that goes past. <laughs> and today is that just that kind of day where the sound, the wind is going just the right direction and the sound travels right across the water. Sorry for the bit of um, deletion of uh, my talking there for a minute. I sometimes say things and then think afterwards, oh, that was maybe a bit too much information, personal information, and I should probably delete that from the video. I try really hard not to give names and places and but sometimes when I'm talking you know I, I feel like we're talking like friends and so I talk to you like I would talk to my friends but then afterwards I think hmm this is still <laughs> this is still the internet and you know I don't know who's listening so I sometimes remove things that I say. So Anyways, back to it. As you can tell, it wasn't very much or very long. You didn't miss anything. I'm just finishing up my thread. And this is why I sometimes, I like to do the background first because sometimes you get into those spots where three corners of the hole are already used and I like to be able to go down in that hole if I can't find it or work it easily. Anyways, let's see if I can get these last two stitches eked in here. Still no rain. We really, it, it's, it's getting rather desperate actually. Um, you know, the other morning I woke up and the cottage smelled a bit funny and immediately I thought, oh, it smells like old campfire. And, but I, I thought maybe it was something in the house. When you live with propane and natural, you know, you live with propane, you're always on the lookout for gas smells or uh, natural gas, I should say, and, you know, things that aren't right. So when I, sorry about that, when I smelt that, I started going around the cottage checking things to see if I could determine what the smell was, and I didn't see anything wrong, so I went outside, and the air outside was carrying this scent, and then I realized that's forest fire, like a smell of forest fire. And the wind was just right that it was carrying it from however far away to, you know, it was carrying it on the wind. And so there is a website um, provided by the Ontario government where you can look up where all of the current forest fires are. And so I had a little look-see and at the moment there is a massive out of control actually I haven't checked the news yet today to know whether it is 
finally under control. Up in Tomogamy, which is uh, near North Bay, north of the, it's about two and a half hours north of us. Terrible, terrible, terrible forest fires at the moment happening there. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about all the people who live up there. There, there have been mandatory evacuations and, you know, the fires are just, uh, are, are quite terrible. Now I, I really should check the news and, and see, uh, an update on that. However, you know, Tomogamy is, is, is two and a half hours away. I shouldn't have been smelling, um, you know, remnants of a forest fire from Tomogamy. So I had, I had a look and indeed there were, there are two or three forest fires closer to us in the Perry Sound area. And, um, two of them were, it says that the cause of two of them were lightning, which is odd because we haven't had any out here. We haven't had any storms in the last week. And the third one was um, man-made. And the man-made one was still out of control. And that one started on the 9th. And th that one was in the, it was just north east of us. And the direction that the wind was blowing, that would have made sense, that that was the fire that I was actually smelling. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's something that is always a little bit at the back of your mind to, you know, when the weather is like this, it's so dry, it's so hot. Um, you know, a lightning strike could could do something like that. It could cause a fire. Uh, we have grounding around the cottage. We have uh, copper grounding laid around the cottage to prevent, you know, the cottage being struck. Uh, but, you know, there are a lot of trees around. There are um, Lots of people who like to start campfires and set up fireworks and, you know, it, it's, it's always something that you have to be aware of. And, you know, you could, you couldn't, if, if it, if it happened, if it started, you just have to head to the boat, head to the boat and get out. So anyway, that was a little disconcerting. So anyways, I went over and had a chat with my father-in-law and he had also smelt it um, and was in the process of checking and testing the little bit of uh, sort of fire, I guess we would call it firefighting equipment that we have on the island. And what it is, it's a, a generator that we keep in the boathouse, his boathouse. And it is attached to a large uh, pipe that's fed directly into the lake. And then from that, some hosing is attached to that, which is, um, is kept, you know, it, it, it sort of goes looped out of the boathouse and kept outside. And it's, it, it looks a bit like a, like a fire hose and, uh, so the water is pumped by the generator directly into this, up into this hose. And then, you know, the, the, the spray itself from the fire hose has about 150 yard uh, spray. So every once in a while we get that out and we test it and make sure it's in good working order. Um, but, you know, obviously if it were sort of a disastrous fire, you would never take the chance of, of fighting something like that yourself. You just, you just get out. Um, so it's, it's one of the reasons I keep an eye on the forecast when it gets this dry and everybody does a little rain dance and hopes for some, some wet weather ahead to help, uh, help the threat of fire. So there've been no more faces at the window. You'll be glad to know. And I haven't felt nervous or concerned. 
I'm sure it was just a one-off thing that he was dared to do by his friends. He was really young, really, really young. So I'm really glad he didn't break his ankle while he was running away. <laughs> and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I had a, a young chap show up at the door about a week and a half ago and peer in the back window. I honestly think that his friends dared him because they could hear us watching Harry Potter. It was very clear that the cottage was not empty. The boat was at the dock. You know, the windows were wide open. We were watching a movie. It was a, it was a calm night. So sound, as I've said before, sound really travels. So there's no way that they didn't know that we were there. So I'm sure that it was just a, a bit of a dare as kids are wont to do. So, oh, I love this so much. Look at this beautiful color. This is just, this is so good, so good. I'm, I'm so happy that I started this. Pretty pleased with myself. Go back the other way don't have any other, I think this is all black on top. Yep. You can see today I've been switching back and forth between one and two handed stitching. I find I sometimes do that on the 40 count. I'm not sure why. It's a bit of a an unconscious habit, but certainly the two handed, I can, zip along quite a bit faster. Sometimes using my right hand gives me a little bit more control, you know, because I am, that's my dominant hand. If I'm, you know, trying to, to take it in a hole that's already filled in three other sides, using my dominant hand to, for accuracy, is probably why I do it without even thinking about it. Trying to watch my tension with this black, uh, that is something that I'm prone to do when I stitch two-handed and I start feeling myself, oops, I have to undo that. Start feeling myself speeding up. Um, I tend to pull, when I pull fast, it pulls it a little bit tighter so my tension will show, you know, especially if I'm going back and forth, you'll get that little bit of, you can see, maybe, I'm not sure you can see it. I'll point it out with my scissors. Right here, just there, you can see, can you see it? I'm, you know what, this is only the first time I'm looking at the camera, so I'm really hoping that this whole time I've been recording that it's been properly in the picture. That would be, annoying if I had to redo it. Anyways, fingers crossed. So let me just scan in a bit here. And maybe you can see right there, just along that line there. I tugged just slightly tighter, probably when I was doing uh, this row of stitches here and then maybe a little bit for this row of stitches here. And there's just that slight line, you know, in a specialty uh, thread design, something like that would be what you were trying to achieve with a pulled thread, you know, where you try to create a little bit of a hole. But of course, um, when you're doing a solid black background, that is not desirable. So I have to really be careful and watch my tension so that it is nice and even, as even as possible, so that I get as much coverage from that black thread as possible. I've had some questions about my uh, clamps. Hey, I've talked about these before, but as you know, we always have new new friends coming to join us. Uh, I have a, a bit of a Frankenstein stand here. It's, uh, it's three different pieces, I think. Um, in fact, I might even have four. I might even have the components of four different stands and, and bits here. So I'm using a K's Creation uh, table frame. So as you can see, it looks like this. And 
the bars that I've got on the side and the knobs that I'm using on the end, these are by Hearthside Creative, which uh, is the maker of my floor frame that's at home. But you know, these bits and pieces all tend to fit together. So if it's, if it's close to hand, then I'll grab it and use it because well, I'd rather be stitching than searching the house for bits and pieces. So, and the rods, the scroll rods, those are, I believe those are also, also Hearthside Creative, the actual rods themselves with the fabric that is attached to the rod. And you can't see that because it is hidden by this gray uh, clamp that I have stuck on the rod itself. Those are, a product called a handy clamp and they come with a rod that does not have fabric on it so they're kind of like they work the way a q-snap works exactly the same way a q-snap works but I use them with my fabric covered rods instead of sewing the fabric to those rods because that means I can switch out projects quite easily and I, I have started you know, we had a discussion a while back about the only thing I didn't like about the handy clamps was that they left a bit of a mark on the fabric when you pulled it really tight because, you know, the clamp itself has a, a bit of a rim on the edge. Uh, and I, I knew that you could tuck some, some batting or some, you know, some felt or something ag against that lip and the edge of your fabric as you roll it. And that helps prevent, uh, but again, remember my comment about the being in a rush to stitch and do what I want to do. I often didn't always take the time to do that. So you can't complain about something if it's your own laziness that is causing the problem. And so since that is definitely the case, I have started keeping a, a, a piece of quilt uh, batting with these clamps. And since the clamps are now with this, this stand all the time, I simply just use the same little piece of quilt batting over and over. So handy clamps, that's the name of the gray pieces that are holding my fabric onto the rods. Handy clamp. And again, they work just like a Q-snap. But I really love to stitch two-handed. And so that is why I tend to I tend to favor my, my, my scroll rod system over and above Q-snaps. For the small projects, I like Q-snaps. If it's smaller, I, I tend to prefer eight by 11 or an eight inch square. That's probably my preferred Q-snap for a small project. And I want a project, if I'm going to use them, I want a project that fits on the inside of that size. I don't want to move the Q-snap. I'm super paranoid about the edges of the Q-snap ruining my fabric. Now, it's never happened, so I'm worried about nothing, and I've seen thousands of stitchers use Q-snaps and then just move the work when they move on to the next section. That is just a personal quirk of my own. I just, I like to have my, my fabric stretched out entirely and rolled up when I'm working on a big project. So I have, I have used a Q-snap. Last summer I used it for shades of blue and it, it drove me a bit crazy because I was always worried about the parts of my stitching that were all scrunched up. I didn't like them being scrunched up. Even though it's perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it. And frankly, people who do it like that probably are way faster stitchers than I am. They certainly seem to get a lot more done. But, you know, personal quirks, right? So, watching my tension, not too tight. Speaking of tension, I had a very good question on the knitting video that I just put out about tension and, you know, Stephanie, I think it was Stephanie who asked about the tension. So I will be putting another knitting video out next Tuesday. I'll talk a little bit about tension for knitting then. 
She also mentioned her tension in crochet, which I cannot speak to because I, I am a terrible crocheter. <laughs> terrible, terrible crocheter. I have always wanted to become a better crocheter. And speaking of crochet, uh, congratulations to Priscilla and Chelsea. So Chelsea on the birth of your son and Priscilla, the birth of your grandchild, um, little baby cash, who is adorable. And have you, if you're on Instagram, you will have seen uh, Priscilla posted some photographs of Cash wearing the most adorable crocheted items and he just he looks he he just looks lovely. So congratulations out to to them. Because what an exciting time. All right. Oops. There we go. I am almost out of power almost out of battery power on my phone. So I think I better wrap up this recording. I don't want to stop though. You know, I'm in, I'm in one of those, let's fill it all in as fast as we can. And it's just so nice. A little bit tight tension there. I'm going to have to really, really watch that. And it's also probably because I have my fabric stretched really taut on these particular frames. So once I release the tension, Let's see if that helps a little bit. So since I'm wrapping it up for this video anyways, let's see. I'm gonna undo my knobs on the bottom and I'm just gonna release a little bit of the tension and I'm gonna see if that helps the way my black stitches are lying. Just a little bit, yep, a little bit. But you know what? <laughs> I also have a light over it and I can see beneath it. So when you put something under it, look at that. See, magically goes away and it looks filled in and beautiful. I love it. I, if you have been on the fence about starting this pattern, go ahead, go for it. With the DMC floss, it's affordable. If you know, if you can splurge and afford the specialty floss to stitch this, then, you know, it's wonderful. And if you can afford the DMC to stitch it, it's wonderful. And if you want to stitch it in your own colors, it's wonderful. The, I, I love everything about this pattern. I'm stitching it on a 40 count, one thread over two, and it's just about perfect. This pattern, this, this project is floating my boat. So I'm hoping that on Monday's update, I'm going to have a fair bit of progress to share with you. I also, heads up, because those who watch this video will have a little inside knowledge for Monday's floss tube, there's going to be a giveaway for sure, because I am now over 4,000 subscribers, which I was I just so excited when that happened. It, I had, I took a picture of it and I sent it to my husband. I sent it to my daughter and I said, look, look, look. And it was, it was really, really fun. And so let's have a giveaway. And just so you guys are in the know, I have part, something that's going to be tucked into the giveaway because I've been saving this. Are you ready? Thread heaven. I have a brand new one that I've been saving for a special giveaway. So this little bit of Thread Heaven is going to be tucked into that giveaway goodie bag. So that's gonna be um, something that I talk about more on Monday because that's it for me. I am well over half an hour. I really, you know, I told myself, keep these to half an hour because the data, the data, the data, don't forget, you know, it's, you're gonna get in so much trouble <laughs> when he realizes how much data you're using, uh, but that's okay. He, I'm kidding, he's been very good and he knows that I'm putting out these videos. So I tease, it's fine. However, uh, I think I'm gonna be over 40 minutes when I put in the little clip about the weather outside. So better go. Happy Friday, happy weekend, happy stitching. I can't wait to see you all on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid. It's gonna be a great weekend, you guys. Lots of stitching to be done. I'll see you Monday.